We've taken on something that's more than a project, to build a boat fueled 100% by nature, a fully electric cruiser. In this video, we're gonna tell you all about it, our plans and next steps for getting her on the water. Everybody has a dream that they can dream of, no matter how scary it is or questionable it is. Our dream of the ultimate sailboat. We've been working, we've been on this journey for years, every step, a step forward, but sometimes it's so questionable and you think, is it all worth it? Is it gonna happen? Until one day, the stars align. So we're literally scraping the ice off the opposite bench. <laughs> This was our first visit to the boat in a field in Switzerland in January. It was freezing and made the boat feel super dramatic and noisy and actually made it pretty hard to get a good look at the decks, which in hindsight was maybe an issue. So we're inside the hull and you can hear Florian outside. Just had to break into a locker by breaking the ice. But she's um quite quite the boat. A lot bigger than I was expecting actually. Really cool. This is the aft so cabin aft quarters if you like. Just see the uh, steering pedestal coming through. This boat's got ballast tanks, so these fill up with water and they're on the beam. So if we look, this is obviously the side of the boat. And what we've got here is these massive ballast tanks. It's a bit worrying that there's no writing calculation yet, but you can't get a rig with that, look, can you? This project has been on our minds for a long time now and to live up to the fully electric mission we're on, she has to be able to fit the bill in so many ways, so we spent a good few hours getting colder fingers by the minute, measuring, speculating, and just trying to work stuff out. So far, so good. She's got ballast tanks to allow us to keep the boat more upright by shifting weight from one side of the boat to another, depending on where the wind is coming from. This in turn keeps the speed of the boat to a maximum, which is super important if we've got any chance of hydro generating our own electricity. The lifting keel is gonna be a game changer, allowing us to reduce drag downwind, again, maintaining as much speed as possible. And the cherry on the top, is that she's a blank canvas inside. Maybe we'll go open plan. Maybe we'll ditch the wheel and go tiller steered. So many decisions to be made. But back to reality, we will be doing all of the fabrications and changes ourselves. So it's even more important we feel that this is the boat as it's definitely gonna demand blood, sweat and tears on this one. All I said, it's properly, properly exciting, Mike. It's one of the rudder bearings. Obviously, you've got two on a nice angle. Massive bearings by Jeff, and they're on what's called a, a spherical bearing. So they don't have to be lined up perfectly, which basically means it's a nice, easy job for us to fit, he says, hopefully. Dutch wood. <laughs> the water line's marked with little pinholes all the way along. So this is waterline and she's got a lovely shape to her. I mean, you can see she's going to move. She's going to be really fast, really, really fine entry. And it really doesn't get wide till about, you know, even at this point here, she's only a meter and a half wide. So she's not a wide boat at all. But the beam is quite far aft and it carries its beam quite far back, which basically means she's going to go downwind really fast. But I guess the one thing that you sort of realise when you're looking at these boats is, or these hulls should I say, this is not a project to be taken lightly. So the boat is in Switzerland and we're in Scotland, which presents some problems. We've got both rudders and a keel here, um, and that's kind of where we're going with that. So the next few videos are going to be about how we build the keel and finish the rudders, because they're structurally, both of these are finished. Well, the keel, not so much. And we've got to make a lead ballast and all that, but we're going to be doing that. And basically everything on this boat, 
I think is probably going to be done with basic hand tools. As a traditional boat builder, that's what it's always been. And because we're moving around that much, we no longer have big tools or anything like that. So, yeah. So we're in Switzerland and... We're in Scotland. We're in Scotland. We need to be in Switzerland and we need to find somewhere to live because a while ago we sold up everything. Got no home. None of that stuff. So we came up with a solution. So to get over the fact that we don't know where we're going to live for, I mean, the next few years, I mean, even when we get the boat out of Switzerland, we're going to be taking it to like the cheapest marina in the UK, wherever that may be. So this big green girl is going to be our project for the next couple of months. We are turning her into a camper van. This is going to be our home on the road. We have got so much cool stuff going on in there. It's going to be designed like a super yacht. But I'm going to show the keel, which is equally as exciting, which is tucked away down here. Now this weighs a lot. I don't know how Chris and I got it in here in Switzerland and to get it here. Um, it's super heavy in itself. Um, so where to start? This is the coolest part. So as I said, it's a lifting keel. So this is the part that goes into a shaft inside the hull, moves on hydraulics. Hopefully they never stop working. Um, and this whole um, fin uh, gets lost into the keel of the boat. So, I mean, that's how shallow we can go. So basically all it's sticking out at the end will be what's called a bulb or a bullet and it's made of lead. So usually it's on the bottom here. Now, <laughs> our keel doesn't have the lead bulb, which is a bit of an issue and definitely one of the biggest challenges yet. So we have been scanning the keel of one of the sister ships. We managed to track it down, one, one of the two that exist. And um, much to Chris's uh, anxiety, we used an iPhone to, to scan the keel because we are gonna have to make our own lead keel. We're gonna have to pour two ton of lead. We're gonna have to make a mold and cast the lead. So we're making a video of that coming soon. So you can see how that all unfolds. We don't even know how good the scan is gonna be. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting times. But the other thing that we have here for the boat is the rudders. So I'm gonna get Chris to show you those. Whew. And that is apparently a lightweight rudder. She's aluminium, as were the rest of the boat. Um, and this is basically my homework now. I've got to fill all this up with weld and, and all these imperfections as well. I won't fill this hole up. This is for an anode. Anodes are basically what stop electrolysis or help to guide the electrolysis to the sacrificial part, not this part. Um, the corrosion in simple terms. This is a shaft, gets bearings on it, and at the top we have some of the clamp on it, and that's the whole steering system which we've got to figure out. Um, this might not look that fancy. Certainly probably doesn't look like it's worth traveling all the way to Switzerland backwards and forwards for. And the reality of it is, is that this actually is superb. Now I'm actually a boat builder and to, for me to own this is absolutely fantastic. Not just because it's ours and it's our project, something we've been searching for for years. It's because of what it is. It was built by KM Yachts. So this is like buying a Porsche or something like that of the boat world. And it's built so well, and that's what matters. Now, it was never finished, it came out of the factory and never went any further. It never got finished and fancied up and all the rest of it. So that's kind of left for us to do, but that's cool. All the structural work is done and that's all I'm bothered about. So, I mean, I wouldn't be too bothered about that either, but it's all done, so that saves us a lot of work. So yeah, we've got to sort this one out and get this ready. And we've got to sort the keel out as well and the other rudder. And we want to do that this year to get it over to Switzerland and get this boat ideally even in the water this year. Now, we'd like to bring it up to the UK. That's the plan. That's where we'll commence the rest of the fit out and the building of the boat. Um, how we get it up there, I really don't know whether we we'll end up with, I don't know, it probably won't be on a truck. Let's put it this way. We've got a price for that. It was through the roof, like ridiculous. No way, it was more than 15,000. And we, we just don't have that kind of money, so it's not happening. So we find a way to 
bring it up the French Canal Network to do that, maybe something like that. But yeah, really cool to be actually working on my own boat and getting some welding done and one thing and another. And super cool to have the van as well, because not only is that going to give us a place to live, it, for me, it's another thing, it's a project. And it's the project that I really need right now. The project itself is basically giving me the opportunity to go back to my roots as a wooden boat builder and do some woodwork, get back on the wooden tools and figure out exactly what we want to do inside the boat and exactly how we can make it the way we want it. It's just a good excuse to get back on the tools, really. Um, aside from that, we've got some really, really cool stuff going on. We've got Wallace heating system going in there. That's a marine heating system. So we've got hot water on demand for showering and all that kind of stuff. Square hot water tanks and chlorifiers, quite innovative stuff. We've got new alternator systems going on for charging and... Hey, Oblas. So much cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's basically Lumar hatches, all that kind of thing. Loads of like marine stuff, which we're... Like, I know you can't test boat stuff on a van, but some stuff you can get really close to see if it actually functionally works for you. And we're doing that, so that's yeah, really cool. There's quite a lot of crossover. Yeah, I think there is, yeah. So it's, it's kind of become the perfect testing ground for us anyway, for what we're going to be doing in the future. Chris is a bit of a tech geek, in case you don't know. You're going to love it. And on that note, I'm going to show you inside our new home. So we're designing this like a super yacht inside. I mean, if you've got a husband who's a boat builder, why wouldn't you? And I'm really excited to show you this palatial step that we started with. I mean, look at this. So this is a combination of lamination and steam bending. So this is like, I think about 14 strips of walnut laminated together and steam bent. Um, yeah, so various different processes going on in here. We've got LED strip under here. This is the business. So a pretty good start. Um, going inside, this is uh, actually cedar wood. It's strip planked. So this is like a traditional boat technique for, for the actual hull. So Ran Sailing, who's another YouTube channel, they're currently building their whole boat like this, which is pretty exciting. You should check them out. And the likes of Spirit Yacht, so that's how their boats are made. And this is actually where the inspiration has come from for our van, our humble little home, is the Spirit 72 yacht, which is actually made in the UK, which is cool as well. So, uh, <laughs> Far from standard pop top <laughs> um, going on here. So this pop top isn't even for this van. Chris has made it fitter van and has fabricated this whole steel frame. <laughs> We've got pulleys and everything going on in here. So all this frame has been fabricated. And again, we've got a frame made here to stiffen the roof up. We've got hatches uh, partially installed here. Uh, these are actually Lumar hatches, which is pretty exciting, keeping it marine. And this, a one inch curved, a different sort of um, curving process, I guess, but again, laminated, curved bulkhead. So all this stuff we've captured in videos. So make sure you stay tuned to see all that come together, see how we've done, for example, the step. And, but first we have got the video about scanning the keel. Um, so that's scanning the keel with the iPhone and then we're moving on to the van so you can see how a boat builder builds a van and if this step is anything to go by the standard that we're aiming for this is going to be epic <laughs> so I cannot wait to share it all with you guys so stay tuned subscribe so you know what's coming like and I would love to hear from you in the comments and we'll see you next week